This last question, uh, um, you could talk for hours about this, so forgive me for making it so general, but uh, um, I'm always asked, asked when I give talks about, is there hope? Is, it, and you know, uh, we've had Jeff Halper here who talked about the one democratic state, and people, people thought he was, it was a pipe dream. I mean, he was, you know, what are you dreaming? Uh, is the end of Israeli colonialism possible? Um, or is it realistic? Maybe that's the better question. Look, unlike your sort of settler colonialism, the American, where the indigenous population has been decimated and cannot have a political leverage on anything in this country. Unlike you, happily, this is not the case with us. The Palestinians... There was expulsion, but there was no genocide. Happily, thanks God, for many reasons, but, but this is the fact. So by being, they are more than half outside and uh, half of them are inside the country. Demographically, they are almost, uh, almost the same or even, I think it's 50-50 already. When you have people, you, can, you have hope. And you can create, uh, and you, can you, you, you create over time this political uh, uh, strength and power in order to force changes. Now, are things irreversible? You cannot undo history. What we can only do is change the products of this history. For example, apartheid system in Israel is one of the outcomes of, uh, of the settler colonialist uh, endeavor, as it was in South Africa, as it was in the States, the segregation. Until today, you suffer from the uh, 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 you know, remains of segregations or in some places stronger than in, in other places. This was also a form of apartheid, not so defined as it is in Israel, not defined as such. But Jews came to that country for many reasons. But the main reason was that we were not, that we were driven out of the diaspora. Until, until genocidal anti-Semitism took over Europe, the great majority of Jews did not opt for Zionism as a solution to persecution and to discrimination. The great majority of Jews had other options, mostly emigration, then assimilation, then joining socialist and uh, communist uh, movements with the hope that they would, uh, uh, they would change the entire world, another uh, messianic idea. My parents were two of those uh, joined this movement. And uh, so you had other, other uh, but within the diaspora. But the message between the years 33 to 45 was that the diaspora doesn't only, it's not only that they don't want us in the diaspora, they don't want us among the living. And this is a, a message that, that uh, you cannot eradicate. You, it's always somewhere. Yeah. Now, I say it doesn't, Palestinians say, but, but why on our account, at our expense? I agree with them. But this is historic. I mean, we have to see also the historical sequence, not, not as, a, as a, 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 a session at court all the time, but to understand the historical circumstances that brought masses of people to Palestine who did not intend to go to Palestine, who never intended to go. Um, so we are there, Israeli Jews are there, we cannot undo this. And that's, that's what Palestinians have to, to understand and uh, their supporters. And also Israeli Jews are not individuals that, I mean, the, it is a people, it has, it has been developed as a people. 
with its rights, according also to international uh, understanding, etc. What does it mean? Does it mean that we have to live as two peoples in the same country, equal, or to decide to, in the meantime, to divide? Um, but this message has to be, I mean, this is, uh, you can undo this reality only by terrible wars. And there are no winners in terrible wars. And much more likely because of Israeli military superiority, it is very likely that Palestinians will be the main sufferers of such a terrible war. T more terrible than Gaza, than the wars on Gaza. More terrible than that. Uh, and I, it's not some, I mean, it's not something that, that we should uh, put our hopes on wars. The right wing in Israel uh, is in favor of wars for one main reason. In wars, the chaos is such that you can do things you cannot do during yeah. normal times. For example, mass expulsion. And the Israeli right wing more and more, the Israeli messianic religious, orthodox Zionist messianic right wing, more and more advocates uh, expulsions. Sometimes some of them say small expulsions of a family, of a perpetrator, of a killing or something, of an Israeli Jew. And some, advo some see uh, mass expulsions under certain pretexts. It, in wars, in wartime, you can do much more than you can do in uh, non-war times because we cannot say it's peace. So war is not our ally, not at all. So I asked if there's hope, and really the hope is the resistance and the, uh, well, the resistance of the folks on the Israeli left and the Palestinians who are working nonviolently for justice? No, all, all the, the hope, the hope is in the rootedness of the Palestinians in their country. Uh, for me, this is, you know, like, this is also a difference when you go and you hear always about the atrocities and about the suffering and the suffering. I think that sometimes Palestinians don't see how strong they are yeah. and how rooted they are. Uh, the contrast that you made fr between our country, where really, you're right, the word you use, decimated, is exactly correct. And that's the flaw in, com in, in the Very. exact comparison between the plight of the Palestinians and the plight of the Native Americans in this country. The Palestinians aren't going to go anywhere. No, yeah, yeah, you're right. Amira, thank you for being here and thanks for your time.